Or he's been signaling me to wrap it up. <laughs> His speech is called The Landlord. summer day, he said, Ken, I have to go to Asia for my work. The market is so bad for houses, I have to rent the house to cover my costs. Okay. Right. And for the first two years that he was gone, he rented to UIC students. Now, I work at UIC, so I have a little leverage with students. And although they were young men, enjoying city life, I could talk to them and keep them more or less under control. And every now and then they were noisy, stuff like that. You probably can imagine young guys, college age. You remember, <laughs> huh? Not too long ago, right? <laughs> but I could talk to them and they were okay. But this past summer, I saw them moving out. I went up to them and I said, well, why, why are you leaving? Finally got them under control. He said, the landlord has raised the rent so much, we can't afford to live here anymore. Okay, well, who's moving in? Five freshmen <laughs> from the suburbs who are rich and can afford to live in the house. Five 18-year-old boys from the suburbs moved into the house now. <laughs> They were like prisoners let out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> they went crazy, partying every weekend, which meant when the parties were over, the people would spill out into the street in front of my house, and they were drunk, and, and there'd be noise, all ah, rah, 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 screaming, yelling, drunken people running up and down the street. The music. <laughs> You know, with the bass. And the cars. Well, if they're having a party or friends over, it doesn't matter where they park a car, including in my driveway blocking my garage. Now, even though they too were students at UIC, and I'm a professor at UIC, and some of them are students in my own department, it didn't matter because they were in heaven. They were out of the suburbs. And it was a bad experience. And I thought, well, this landlord, Thomas, what have you done to me? Just because you want more money and you can't sell your house, you're renting to people like this who are torturing me. And I would get so mad. You know that feeling where you think somebody is just not respecting you, don't care about, doesn't care about you? How could you do this? What kind of person are you? So greedy. It got so bad that this winter, during that, those sub-zero temperature periods, the students managed to burst not one, but two water pipes in the garage by leaving the garage door open the whole night. Because the air was somewhere else, right? The second time, the water was this thick, 
Well, the ice was this thick on the garage floor with there being so much water. They had like an ice skating rink down there. Now I saw that, and I thought, whoa, I hope that's not gonna affect my house because we share a wall. And soon after they broke, broke the pipes, there were some workers down there, and I went down to the garage to kind of find out, you know, what's going on and what's gonna affect me. So I went up to one of the workers, and I said, hey, uh, I see you're fixing up the garage here. I didn't even get into my story about, is this gonna affect me? When he said, I'm not a repairman, I'm the pastor. Pastor? What do you mean you're the pastor? He said, I'm the pastor. Now look at me. I'm property manager because these kids are trashing the house. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. What do you mean? He said, I'm the pastor of the Chinese Baptist Church of the Western Suburbs, and Thomas Chung is one of our parishioners, and we sent him to Asia to do missionary work for us. He's in China helping poor people, and he's just renting his house to cover his expenses. And look what they're doing to it. I was in shock. You mean Thomas Chung, the greedy, money-hungry, insensitive <laughs> landlord, was doing missionary work? <laughs> yes, he was doing missionary work. He was a victim of these kids just like me. He was just trying to cover expenses. Maybe that's ever, ever happened to you, where somebody turned out to be not what you thought they were at all. So eventually I did with, I, de I dealt with the students. I went to the dean of students at UIC, I explained what's going on, the dean took care of them. Now they're quiet. <laughs> but the lesson I learned from that was much more important than solving the problem with the students. And the lesson was that sometimes People are not what they see at all. Not at all. So the next time you find yourself saying, that person, that's a bad person. They're doing that to me. Why don't they care about me? Stop. Ask around a little bit. Find out a little bit more information. And discover it, like Thomas. They're not what they seem. Like you, they may be victims of circumstances. And they may actually be missionaries, <laughs> after all. Thank you very much. <laughs>